stoked because today we are going to make a dog safe chocolate egg. We're gonna do this DIY smashable chocolate egg kit with some dog safe chocolate. Yeah. So what is dog safe chocolate? Well, traditional chocolate that you see in the store marketed as chocolate is made from the cacao bean, which is toxic to dogs, like deadly toxic. It's got a substance called, called theobromine in it that can stop their heart. So no chocolate for dogs, not when you buy it in the store and it's called chocolate. However, here at Do It With Daisy, everything that we do is dog safe. So we use a food called Karab. The Karab chips that we are going to be melting down today are derived from the Karab bean, which has a very, very similar taste to the cacao bean, but it has no theobromine. It's not toxic to dogs at all. It is fairly high in copper and it's really high in fat, so we don't wanna give them like a whole bunch of it, but it's totally fine. Like it's not gonna hurt them to have some chocolate for a treat when it's made from Karab. So let's see what the instructions here say, Waffles. 20 ounces of chocolates will make two breakable chocolate egg halves. For each mold, place 10 ounces of melting wafers in a microwave safe. Set aside one handful for later. Okay, so we want to measure out 10 ounces of chocolate. I'm assuming that they went on kind of the light side so that people wouldn't feel like they have to buy lots of chocolate. So I'm probably gonna add a little bit more so that I can make sure that it's nice and thick and it turns out alright. So we want 10 ounces of chocolate. That's two. Okay, this is kind of a lot of chocolate and I'm nervous. I feel like it might burn easily because there's so much chocolate. So in order to prevent the chocolate from burning, I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of coconut oil. Coconut oil is the perfect oil for candy melting because when it reaches room temperature, it solidifies back up. Now we're gonna start. All right, so 12 is my magic number. So I think we're gonna go ahead and do 12 ounces. So now I'm going to put this in the microwave for 30 second increments. In between each of those increments, I will give it a little stir. So let's make sure we've got something stirrable. Okay, I've got a fork, I've got a spoon, and I've got a chopstick. I will probably stir with the chopstick first. I feel like that'll be easier. And then as it gets more melted, I'll switch. All right, so now that is all melted. Multi, multi chocolate. All right, next step, tap on the countertop to remove as many large bubbles as possible. Look at that. There's like definitely bubbles rising to the surface. So that's definitely a real thing. Make sure you tap your bubbles out. All right, and then next step, it says, pour the chocolate into the egg mold, swirl it around the mold to make sure the chocolate reaches up to the edge on all sides. All right, so let's grab this little rubber spatula here, and we will use that to scoop the chocolate out of here. Make sure we get all our chocolate. I'm gonna get all of the chocolate out to work with. If I have extra chocolate, it says to pour it back in the bowl. Okay, and then it says to swirl it around. And make sure it reaches up all the sides. What's the next step anyway? Place the egg mold in the refrigerator to chill for at least five minutes. Okay. All right, so there is some extra chocolate, I think. Let's go ahead and pour any extra chocolate into here. When we're swirling around, I think we wanna cover this lip too, cause that's gonna help it seal together. See in the picture, their thing has a lip. So I think that my thing should have a lip too. So we'll swirl it. When we swirl it, we're just gonna make it go all the way up to go over this edge here. I think that that's probably good. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the refrigerator for five minutes. While that's refrigerating, I'm gonna go ahead and fill some of these suckers up. Also came with these cute little flowers. Pretty sure these I'm gonna put inside of the egg. We'll go ahead and put these in the refrigerator too. That'll make them set fast. All right, I'm a little nervous. Chocolate's definitely very hard. It might break. But I mean, like, if it breaks, we can just melt it down again and try it. Okay. Well, I spilt chocolate across the edge a little bit, so I'm gonna have to break that off in order to be able to pull this mold away from any edges. 
Okay, so gently pull it away. I'm thinking maybe if I do it upside down, I might have better luck. All right, so I think I've got it pulled away from the top edges. I just need to get it away from this side. Okay, so there's our first half of the chocolate egg. So apparently I didn't need these edges here. That just made it harder to take out. But that's good to know. We put the extra chocolate in these little flowers or some of the extra chocolate anyway. So we can do the same thing with these guys. Oh, those are super cute. And last one, let's see. Ooh, this one's coming off real nice. Nice, all right, look how cute that is. Okay, so now we're going to set this aside and we're gonna do the same thing for the other half of the egg. See, this is still pretty melted, but I need to add more chocolate. Let's go ahead, we'll put our little mixing utensils in our egg mold, ready to go for the next one. Let's add another 10 ounces of chocolate. And we will get this melting. This is almost melted. Now when the little bits of chocolate chips are that small, then you don't really wanna risk burning the chocolate by putting it in for an additional 30 second increment. So we can just stir it around until it gets the rest of the way melted. And then I'm gonna go ahead and fill up my egg mold here, just like I did last time. I was supposed to tap this on the counter to get rid of all of the bubbles, but I didn't do that. Hopefully it turns out just fine. Let's go ahead and swirl this around. The chocolate to get all the way up on these edges here. All right, so let's go ahead and pour any extra chocolate back into our melting bowl. All right, I think that's good. I'll put the second half in the refrigerator for at least five minutes. The next thing that I wanna do is I found some dog-friendly meltable white chocolate. And again, I'm using dog-friendly with like a lot of liberation here. All of these foods are very, very, very high in fat. So there's a really good chance of some gastrointestinal issues, but none of these snacks are gonna have any ill long-term effects. So I'm gonna do the same thing that I did with the chocolate. I'm just going to stir the white chocolate every 30 seconds with a chopstick. And then I also want to go ahead and make a few more of these flowers. I'll get those in the refrigerator. All right, so now I have our white chocolate melted and I'm gonna actually use this to fill some details on here. All right, so I just came up with this idea of doing multiple colors on the fly. So I don't have any food coloring that I have checked for the ingredients for to make sure that they're dog safe ingredients. So I'm going to use some different alternatives. I'm going to use beetroot powder. That should make either a pink or a red. I don't want my chocolate to have a beet flavor. Just a teeny touch, and then I'm gonna add this white chocolate in here, and I think that that should make it pink. Oh my gosh, that's a lot. Okay, so probably not this much for sure. Ooh, but it definitely gives it color. Let's see what it tastes like. Yeah, you really have to look for the beet flavor in there, so that's totally fine. Let's go ahead and say we dipped the top of our egg in this reddish purplish. This is fun. See now when you get the baby food maker to make some of the other recipes that we've done, then you also get these little baby spoons, which are some sort of silicone material or rubber or something, but they work great as little miniature spatulas. See, look how pretty that is. All right, and let's see, do I want any other red in here? Let's see, I can do orange, blue, white. Yeah, I'm gonna do another red right here. I'm gonna do the same thing with the turmeric. Let's try about like 16th or an eighth of a teaspoon. Definitely not as much beet powder as we put in this sucker, but more than we try to at the beginning, like more than a dash, I guess. All right, so let's put some white chocolate in here and mix it up. Oh, this is blending in a lot nicer. Ooh, yeah, look at that. That's a really pretty color. All right, let's taste it and see if it tastes too turmeric-y. Okay, so now we are gonna go ahead and do either a green or a blue. I actually have no idea because I'm gonna use spirulina powder, which is green when it's dry, but when it gets wet, it turns blue. So I have no idea how it's going to act when it's submerged in this white chocolate. 
pour some white chocolate in here. Mix it up. Ooh, I think this is gonna make a really nice green. And then we're gonna have to do a little taste test. Yep, still tastes like chocolate. So, I mean, you can see this is how this one turned out. The colors aren't like super vibrant, but I didn't have any dog safe food coloring on hand other than the powdered stuff that I made. So we will go ahead and decorate this half too. However, the first thing I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and fill up one of these flower molds. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take some of the white chocolate. I'm gonna stir it into the white chocolate that's already trying to start hardening on me. It should help to make sort of equal temperature between the two and give me a little bit more chocolate to work with here. That is much easier. Go ahead and pop that into this little flower here. And then I'm gonna set that in the refrigerator so I've got one little yellow flower to add into the mix. All right, so we've got more white chocolate melted. That way we can go ahead and decorate this side as well. And we still have plenty of beetroot powder in here to work with. Need to add just a teeny bit of spirulina in here to make our green. We wanna add a teeny bit more turmeric too. Now, let's go ahead and pour, actually, let's start with the yellow. Start with the yellow and we'll just do all the yellow that we need at once. And I really wanna scrape the edges to make sure that any chocolate that hardened in the corners gets mixed in too, because that way it gets melted up and we can still use it. And then I'm gonna use the extra to fill these little flower things. I'm gonna go ahead and toss that in the refrigerator so that maybe I can use this mold again by the time I'm done decorating. And now we're gonna move on to green. Mix this into our spirulina and then we're going to go ahead and fill up whatever sections we want to be green. Perfect, and if we have any extra, we'll go ahead and fill this little flower up with it. And now yellow and green are done. So this is what our flower turned out like when it was only half melted when it went into the mold. Definitely wanna make sure that it's all the way melted. And then we can go ahead and prepare our red. So now we'll go ahead and put our pink on. And then we'll go ahead and use the rest to, well, first I wanna make sure that I have got these filled up evenly because everything else is all the way filled up and then there's just these little pink indents. So it was driving me a little crazy. So we'll go ahead and fill those pink sections in the rest of the way. And then any other chocolate we have can go right into our little flower mold here, which will go in the refrigerator so that this can solidify too. As far as our egg goes, all we need to do after we put whatever candies we want inside is to fill it with the rest of our chocolate, which is still a little bit melted. So we will see how that's still looking when the rest of our candies come out of the refrigerator. So we are going to, let's see, this one's a little bit more banged up than this one. This one's shiny and pretty. So we're gonna have this one be the bottom of our egg. We also made colored ones using the colors that we had to decorate on top. So go ahead and put the pink flower in there, the yellow flower. I'll show them to you in case they're completely destroyed by the time we're done crushing the egg open. And our green flower. I gotta remelt this. This is not liquid anymore. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and put this in the microwave for 30 seconds, give it a little stir, and then put it in for another 30 seconds and repeat until melted. All right, so that only took one 30 second increment in the microwave, and I'm really glad that I pulled it out when I did because at the top, it's got like kind of a rough texture up here. That means that that chocolate is burnt and it's going to taste a lot more bitter, not really the sweet flavor that we like in our chocolate. So I'm going to try to avoid using that. All right, so it says to pipe a thin line around the top of the edge and then we can gently close them together. This thing's already pretty thin. I mean, any line on top of here is gonna end up being pretty thin, I feel like. But we'll go ahead and just kind of coat this edge. Okay, so let's give this a try now. There are no more instructions. That was really the end of the instructions, but I think that it's pretty safe to say that I should probably smooth out the chocolate on the side to seal it closed a little better. 
Now we're gonna cover it with the white chocolate. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the refrigerator, let it chill one more time to really seal up those edges. All right, here is, actually I didn't want this plate. I need a bigger area with more contrast. All right, so now our egg is all the way sealed here. And then we can garnish it with some berries, put some strawberries in there too. Scooch this up so that we can do a little strawberry flower in the bottom. Now when I smash it, the chocolate will go all over the blueberries and it'll be more than just a candy, it'll be like a full dessert. So thank you so much for joining us. We are going to be smashing these eggs live. So I hope you join us for our Easter feed and stay tuned for when that's going to be. This is gonna be a blast. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you give this a try too. We got this at Ross, but I'm sure they also have it online. It's just a DIY smashable chocolate egg kit. We like to shop at Ross because a lot of them are pet friendly, so we were able to go together to pick that out. Yeah, so I'm really excited. I hope that you give this a try and that you join us for our Easter egg smashing live. We'll see you soon.